Hi everyone, uh, day four today of my functional medicine detox um, from Equilibrium Nutrition. So first update of course will be on food. So dinner last night, um, I cooked up some spinach with some olive oil and lemon as a dressing. I really, really tried to recreate this incredible steamed spinach that I had in an Italian restaurant in Melbourne and also when I was in Italy and just didn't quite nail it. There's something extra in there that I haven't quite figured out yet, but I will keep trying. Spinach is really worth a mention here, just briefly. A lot of the big mistakes people make with spinach is eating a lot of it raw, and I did this myself for quite a long time, putting it in my smoothies, because I'm vegetarian, I was like, I need iron, I need to get all this spinach into me. If you eat large amounts of raw spinach in its raw state, it contains oxalates, and oxalates actually impair your iron absorption. So you're actually depleting yourself of the iron you're really trying to get into your system. Iron is quite challenging for the body to absorb from the diet, particularly from plant-based sources. It's one of the weaknesses of a plant-based diet. So it's just around understanding how to actually prepare your food, combine your food, so that you're getting the nutrients out of it that you need. So please cook your spinach if you're gonna be having spinach. Certainly have raw spinach from time to time, but don't make it a really big feature of your diet, or you may be depleting that iron that you're trying to include. In addition to my spinach last night, I also had some delicious um, uh, roasted pumpkin and beetroot, and I had some lovely lentils on the side, and finished off with a little bit of fat with some avocado on top. And I pretty much had the leftovers of that for my lunch today, um, which was equally delicious, just reheated. There's nothing wrong with reheating, guys. I know that you sort of think fresh is best, but look, we live in the real world here and um, we all work and have very busy lives. So definitely batch cook as much as you can on this detox um, and particularly in advance. So you've got food that's ready to go um, because initially it can be a little bit overwhelming what to eat and how to prepare this food. Even though it's super simple, it's just unfamiliar because we've kind of taken away your usual um, go-tos like the condiments and pre-mixed sauces and things like that. Um, also today, I really wanted to just have a brief chat about the liver and why that this detox is a phase one and phase two detox. And this is a detox for the liver because it's not just a cleanse. So this isn't about just clean eating and giving the digestion a rest. This is actually a whole program that's designed around supporting our liver. So it's giving the liver a rest it's giving it a lot of support in the form of herbs to actually assist it to cleanse our blood and get rid of a lot of stuff that may already be residing in our system. So it gives it a little bit of a kickstart and um, allows your system to function a lot more effectively going forward. So our liver, honestly, it's like the unsung hero of our bodies. We take our livers so for granted and it's one of our most resilient organs that we have. And it's incompatible with life to not have a liver. So um, we do use and abuse it, and um, that's kind of okay in small doses because it's very resilient. But that's why it's important to put these little detoxes into our seasonal routine in particular, just in order to give the liver that support to allow it to work as effectively as possible. Because it'll put up with a lot, but once it's had enough, it's had enough, and it's game over. You need a new liver or you're done time expired. So this is a really, really great way to love and nurture your liver and um, give a little bit of TLC. Because in reality, nowadays, our livers are coping with a whole lot more than what they had to cope with 100 or 200 years ago, or even 50 years ago. We live in a very industrialized lifestyle. So it's not just the food that we're eating, it's the water that we're drinking. It's all of the things in our environment. You think about all the fragrances that are in everything now, all the cleaning products, all the surfaces, how they're treated, your couch, um, your car seats, all of these things that we're getting exposed to. And our skin is our largest organ and our skin is actually absorbing a lot of these um, chemicals. And so where are they going? To the liver, that's the filter. So it has to go there first. So the liver very easily gets overburdened and overwhelmed. Um, and this actually gets worse over time. So that's why it's really important we wanna nourish our liver. Two other things I wanna mention on today's video. 
First one is spring water. Now, I've been a really slow convert to spring water. Um, I've always been of the belief that it is the government responsibility in countries like Australia to provide safe drinking water. Now, safe drinking water does not necessarily mean healthy, vibrant, alive and nourishing water. It means that there's gonna be no bacterial growth in it, so it can actually be stored for periods of time. And maybe it's even got some added stuff that's supposed to show some health benefits like reducing tooth decay. So we've got fluoride and chloride added to our drinking water. And I'm not gonna get into a lecture about this. You have to make your own decisions. But essentially on this detox, I really, really encourage you to drink spring water, including in your smoothies, any way that you're using water over the seven days, please, get spring water, it will really make a difference. It's also important in supporting your gut. So if we're adding chlorine to water in order to get rid of the bacteria, where else do we have bacteria? In our gut. And we're really killing it off at quite an alarming rate. And this is reflected in people having so many gastrointestinal issues. So just a little bit to think about. I actually get a 10 litre box of our beautiful Mount Lofty water. So local is best, um, from a natural spring is best. And that way you're getting water closest to its source and in its most sort of alive and fresh state. The final thing I want to mention today is also a topic near and dear to my heart, and that is coffee. So look, I love coffee to the extent that I have one coffee a day. I really, really choose where I have that coffee. Often it's at home because I can fully control where that coffee has come from and how it's prepared. And I also have black coffee. So look, coffee on a detox, they don't often go together. But one thing I love about this particular program is they're not actually on the path of having you have worse symptoms than you need to already have on a detox. So if you are a coffee drinker, you are allowed to still have your coffee on this detox, provided it is one small coffee a day. They really recommend that you do try and cut down if you're having more than that leading up to the detox to minimize your caffeine withdrawal because it is a real thing. Caffeine is a drug like many others and so we do get reliant on it and you will have withdrawal symptoms if you remove it suddenly. So the best way is if you reduce your um, coffee by half a cup if you're having multiple cups a day per day over about a week to sort of try and get yourself down to something more manageable or off coffee entirely for the detox, if you can do it. I don't do that. Um, I enjoy my coffee. Um, I don't sort of use and abuse it. And importantly, no refined sugar, guys. If you're having sugar in it, no sugar at all. No honey, no maple syrup, no substitutes, no sweetener, no artificial sweeteners for sure. My goodness, they're bad for your liver. And we also want to avoid dairy. Dairy is one of the foods that we're eliminating on this detox. Um, dairy, again, is a whole other topic for me that I could do a really, really long post on, but I'll leave that one today. So if you do need to have a milk in your coffee, you can have a very, very, very small amount of an organic nut milk, but try going black. It's the best way. It'll make you choose better quality coffee as well. And preferably if you can, organic, fair trade, all of those good things when you're choosing your coffee to have on this detox. So coffee is okay. Just be mindful of why you're drinking it. And maybe the detox could be a good opportunity for you to go off coffee and see, well, do I really need it? And why is this in my life in the first place? Food for thought. Thanks very much for tuning in. And again, any questions, comments, please feel free to post. And I look forward to chatting again tomorrow. Bye.